Hello and welcome back to the show. I'm Tom Cristiano. Well, tonight we have a wonderful panel of four candidates for our Chelmsford election, which will take place on Tuesday, April 7th. We have a selectman candidate, we have a library trustee candidate, and we have two town meeting representative re-election candidates. Well, three if you count me, but <laughs> most people don't count me. I don't count for much, but, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so uh, with me tonight, we have Donna Newcomb. How are you, Donna? Fine, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, your first time on the show, Donna. Yes, I'm absolutely. so excited. I feel honored. I've known yeah. you for such a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, you've been a great contributor to the town of Chelmsford. Well, In fact, you. didn't uh, you get a Citizen of the Year Award a few years ago? Uh, yes, I did, thank you. I Hello, believe I'm Lord. in good company here. Yes, yes, with Mary right. Tiano and Angie, Angie, also a yes, citizen of the year. Yes, absolutely. So we just got to get Lord a citizen of the year someday. <laughs> you know, hopefully in a, in a year or two. All right. I'll put my nose to the grindstone. Yeah. <laughs> Something so, to shoot for. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. So Don has been um, contributing to the town a lot. She helped us get more Chapter 70 funding. Yep. Along, what was that, with Laura McLaughlin? With Laura McLaughlin. You were kind of co-cheering a lot yeah. along with so many people. Oh, Andy a lot of people. It was the entire Kathy town. Kathy Duffett. Yeah. It was the entire oh, town. Yes. The entire town was involved in that. And I'm so oh. thrilled that you're running for a position that I held a little while ago, library trustee. Library trustee, yeah. That's fantastic, yep. Donna. Very we'll talk so later about why you decided to run. And great. And what your goals are, maybe a little later about the Dutton House, if yep, you could update absolutely. us. Absolutely. That'd be great. Thanks, Don. <laughs> and we have my friend again with us, Angie Toronto. Yeah. Hi, Angie. How are you, Tom? Great. Seems like I see you all the time. I know, Angie. <laughs> some of you may be aware who are avid followers of the show, of whom I assume there's thousands out there. <laughs> but Angie was just on our last show. That's right. And Angie is doing me a big favor tonight because uh, one of our selectman candidates, Lou Moreno, was scheduled to be on tonight's show. However, he has a, a double ear infections and he's not feeling well at all. So he let us know today that he's not going to be able to make the show. So who did I call? My friend Angie. And I said, Angie, I really would like it if you could come on the show today. It really would help out a lot. You have experience. and. Could you come on the show? And Angie said, yes, Tom, for you, I'll do anything. Oh. Or words to that effect. I'm kind of making <laughs> that up. But. <laughs> I just said I would be willing. I'd be yeah. glad yeah. to help out. That's so Angie, though, he's, um, I put together this new list. It's called TC Show Gold Panelists. And now that we've been doing the show about 20 years, we have a number of panelists who have 20 or more appearances on the show. And guess what? Angie is third highest at wow. 26 appearances in, <laughs> as of tonight, with tonight's appearance. So thank you very much, oh, Angie. You're welcome. You're always here to help communicate what's going on in town. And anytime I ask you to be on the show, you usually say yes, and you're here. Thank you, thank Angie. You. Oh, my pleasure. So as I mentioned a minute ago, Angie is not only a Chelmsford Citizen of the Year, but he's also a former dean at the Chelmsford High School, mm -hmm. a longtime teacher at the Chelmsford School System. Right. Angie was a Chelmsford school, school committee person for what, nine, 12, 12. years? 12, 12 years. years, wow. Yeah. Amazing. So, and a town meeting rep for a long time. Nine. Angie's running for re-election in Precinct yes. 8, right, right. Angie? Yes, this I year? am. Right. Are you also on the Democratic Town Committee? Yes, I am. See, this guy does everything. You're amazing, oh, Angie. Oh, well. <laughs> so thank you for being here, Angie. Yeah. I appreciate I'm it. I'm glad, Tom. Thank you. And for the first time on the show, we have my friend Laura Merrill with us tonight. Hi. How are you, Laura? I'm great, Tom. Thank you for having me here today. Thanks for being here. You're running for selectman this year. It's so exciting, isn't it? It is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been a town meeting rep for a number of years. What are you, a precinct two or three? I'm in precinct two. Precinct two. Yes. Uh, but you're not up for re-election this year, I'm not up for re-election. I'm in the middle of my second term. Right. So you decided to run for selectman. We'll talk about that later, why you decided to run. What are your top priorities, etc. I like your tag there, but it comes up. You, can everybody see that? Yeah, look okay. at that. Laura Merrill <laughs> Selectman. Beautiful. Nice Thank design. You. And um, so you're, you've been a town meeting rep for about four years, I think, right? Something yes. like that. Four or five. Great. So we'll talk about all your goals and everything. And okay. Thanks for being on the show. You can have a lot of fun, even though it's the first time on the show. <laughs> well, along with Donna, first of many, hopefully. Already having fun. So. Yeah, great. Yeah. We just like having fun in the yeah. show. That's all we do. Well, but Tom, if you have us on every other, every other week, I think we can catch up to Angie in a year. At about a right. year, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> but Angie may not. I don't know. That's fine. <laughs> we might need a bigger plaque. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. That's true. 
So thank you for being here, Laura. And um, we have my good friend Mary Chan with us again. How are you, Mary? I'm good, Tom. How are you? Good. And you know what I just thought of? It's your 13th time in the show, exactly one half of 26, which is Angie's appearances. So not to make a big deal about the number of appearances, no, but, <laughs> but Mary's been a good friend to the show and a long time Tom meeting representative, right? You've been many, many years a rep. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm up this year, but my first time elected was in 2002. 2002, wow. wow. Yeah. And, um, so that is a long time. time. <laughs> 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 and you're also an active member of the League of Women Voters, yes. right? Yes. And the D Democratic Town Committee as well? Yes. Yeah. Not not as active with the Town Committee, the Democratic oh. Town Committee, but um, I like to be involved with them as well. Right. Nice. And you, do you still do something with St. Mary's Church and committees and things? Yeah, yep. My groups? son is receiving his confirmation. <laughs> oh, He's wonderful. in 10th grade, so I'm wonderful. still teaching. Uh, as well as Donna, his, yeah. her daughters, and oh. CCD. He's in tenth grade, mm -hmm. so he's younger than your daughter, yes. right? Your daughter's driving now, right? Yes. M is it Maggie? <laughs> 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 I know. I I keep calling. Her, I used to call her Mini Me because she was like a miniature version of you, <laughs> and now she's taller than you, right? Or almost as tall. Yes, she's caught up pretty well. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Yep. And, and they're all well, so nice. Well, my son is taller than both of us now. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. It's good oh, to have wow. a boy taller. And you're, of course, your husband's Frank Tiana, the superintendent of the That's school. Right. Yes, nice. he is. Yeah. Nice. And I'm a CPA. I work. <laughs> a CPA. Wow. That's nice. Now's my season. Yep. Oh, that's right, because tax season's yep. coming up, or is, we're in the middle of it. Do, how about TurboTax? Wouldn't that take away all the competition? But people still go to people who do their tax returns, huh? Yeah, well, I use TurboTax. Yeah, well, if you're if it's not that complicated, and anyone can do their own taxes, yeah, that's yeah. the way oh, it's supposed really? to be set up. <laughs> but yeah. for some folks, um, either A, they don't want to be bothered, or yeah. B, it's a little more complicated. And yeah. Yeah. we do it every day, and some people only do it once a year, and it's a lot to keep up with, especially with some of the changes that have been in place. Oh, I see, <laughs> I see yeah. a lot of nodding heads, yeah. so yes. some people have been yes. looking at theirs already. I use that yeah. TurboTax, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but that's what. So, do you like it, Mary? Being an accountant, I do. I do. How, how long have you been an accountant? Um, 1989. Really? I was still in college when I got my first oh, job. Oh, because I was going to say yeah. you don't even look that old to be <laughs> born in '89. I mean, it's amazing. I wish. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, thank uh, you, Tom. Mary, for being this on the show great. again. It's been a while. I don't know why, but it's been a while since you've been on the show. Well, I hope it, 13 should be a lucky number. I yes, guess. it should. This will be your lucky, lucky show. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe if we could start with Laura, if I could ask you, Laura, why have you decided to run for Selectman this year? Well, um, it basically comes down to fiscal accountability and um, slowing the growth of property tax um, oh. in, in the two two terms that I've been in town meeting, I've become uh, very concerned with the level of sp spending that's yes. going on with the town and um, many of these are non-essential projects that often are being added to our outstanding town debt and I'm, I believe that we're, by continuing the, down this path, we're going to make Chelmsford an unaffordable. Oh. Um, the last yeah. 15 years, uh, our property taxes have doubled and um, at a rate of about 4.29% each year on wow. average. On average, wow. And if we continue in another 15 years, it's we're going to be, yeah. the average single family home, homeowner is going to be paying about $1,000 a month. This is a burden to our seniors, it's a burden to future generations, and it's going to make Chelmsford unaffordable for many of us. Wow. So taxes, holding them down is one of your top priorities, it sounds like. It is. It yeah. really is. Um, in addition to that, I, I'm very um, interested in preserving the, the s community itself, the quality of the community, slowing the growth development and um, trying to preserve and protect our town resources. Oh yes, are you big? You're big with the outdoors, aren't you? Don't I see some pictures oh. on Facebook of you out in the outdoors with your family and everything? I love the outdoors. I have been. Uh, I I live near the uh, Deep Brook Reservation oh, as yeah. well as the Oak Hill Reservation, and mm -hmm. I'm up there every other weekend, walking around. I I just it's my favorite place to be. I think it's one of the prettiest places that wow. in town. 
It's it's a hidden wonder. So you like hiking, walking, snowshoeing, skiing? Oh gosh, yes. I'll, I'm actually going to be skiing this weekend. Really? What? Uh, with my parent, my mother, and my children. With your mother too? Wow. Nice. Yeah, she's she's a avid skier as well. You're talking about downhill skiing? Yes. Wow. Yeah. And how many children do you have, Laura? If I, you don't mind. I have two children. Yeah. I have a, my son is going to be 16 in another week. Which oh, you'll be when driving you started all. talking about driving, <laughs> yeah. I, I I asked him like, why aren't you asking about driver's ed? And he he didn't want to waste his vacation last week. I said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and but my he's, yeah. he's going to get his driver's license though. So I assume it? so. He's turning 16 shortly. So and I, it's it's just. Every one of his friends, I'm going to have to be peering around the snowbanks to see which one of them is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it might be easier though yeah. if he gets it because then you don't have to drive him all over as much, right? He could drive himself. He could, he but then I wouldn't have my car. Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I got when I was 16? Uh, we knew a guy who owned a little auto dealership, so we went to the auction, I still remember it, for twenty five dollars, this is nineteen sixty five. I was going to say, Tom, <laughs> nineteen fifty seven Chevy. Honest to God, a six cylinder, three speed on the column. He didn't mark it up, of course, but I, it, that was a true. You may not believe it, twenty five dollars, but it had a ho huge hole with like a cancer thing on the side. You know, with the body rot in those days, but it ran nice. And yeah. so I used to drive around. With, it's lucky nothing happened, but there was no seat belts back then. One time not. I had 14 kids in the car, including oh my myself. Heavens. It was oh. a record of ever the most in the car. Anyway, not to scare you or anything. Yeah, I was but just <laughs> thinking, <laughs> you're scaring the poor ones. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then I got an Alfa Romeo the next year, a used one. A beautiful, oh my God, a nice convertible two-seater sports car. That They're not as expensive as they are now, yeah. uh, but I was lucky, I guess, in high school. And I also had a little 50cc Honda motorcycle in high school. So yes. my high school days were very interesting. And I can imagine. Oh. Oh. I'm hoping yeah. there's less interest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah especially yeah. with the motorcycle. I'm so Because yeah. those were in the days before helmets. Right. right. So, right. And yeah. nobody was wearing helmets. And they didn't say do it. Nobody advised it. So there I am, sometimes going over 40, 50 miles an hour in that little thing. With no helmet, it's crazy. Yes. I'm lucky I'm here today, right? Let's face it. Right. But anyway, not to talk about me no, so much. No, but I do want to also say I have a 12-year-old daughter. She'll be yeah. devastated if I didn't mention her. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, we so were going to get to her. Yeah, I was going to get to yeah, her. So um, what schools do they go to? Uh, they're over at the high school and oh. um, Parker here. Oh, she, here at Parker, yes. great. Has she ever been in the TV studio? I don't know that she has. She oh. hasn't mentioned it. <laughs> and what are their names? We might as well mention their names too. Eric and Allison. Eric and Allison. Nice. So 12 and 16, is it? Yes. Nice. So that's great, huh? You have a nice young family, so you know what it's like being in the school system, paying okay. taxes. Do you do you own a home or? Yes, you, I do. Oh, I've, nice. so I've you pay taxes, property taxes. I've been. I've owned the same home for 20 years over in North Chelmsford. 20 years. Nice. Yep. And. Um, We'll talk about it again maybe at the end, but you might want to quickly mention when your campaign party is and where it is? Oh, yes. My campaign party is actually uh, March 7th, a, a week from Saturday, over at the Chelmsford Country Club from yeah. 2 to 5 p.m. 2 to 5 p.m. Great. Yeah, wonderful. I hope you can make it. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> so you have a you don't have a campaign manager, do you? Or I'm, I'm trying to run, run with a few volunteers yeah. and try to... Um, there's a lot to do is running for selectmen, I, and uh, we're, we're, we're making our way through the list. I was going to say, yeah, because I think um, we were talking the other day about how much, how time consuming it is, right? Because it is. Why don't we talk quick? You also have a job, right? As a yeah. software person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a yeah. paying job. So right. is it software, Laura? Yeah, I, I do software development uh. for the business solution side. I, I, it, our company makes software that we sell to customers, but I work on the software that keeps the company together. Oh. So I work on the finance software and the operation software and the CRM software and all the things in the middle to tie it all together. So wow. I, I'm So that keeps you busy, right? Oh, so yeah. You, <laughs> so you do <laughs> that. You have two young children, so that <laughs> keeps you busy. And now you're running for selectmen. 
Yes. And but you you do have plenty the time to go to the meetings and things like that and yes and listen that, to all us constituents. I <laughs> I you know and that was a big concern of mine yeah. before I even began to pull papers. So the first thing I did was actually I I called Janet Askenberg who I knew was also uh, in a similar situation having a family and I asked her, is this a doable thing and. and after talking to her, I realized that I, I will have the time to do this, and, and you know, it's, it's a matter of keeping your priorities straight and being organized, but that um, you make time to do the important things. Yes, wonderful. Good. Well, you could forget about television for the next three yeah. years. Well, that's it. I'm going to miss out on Game of Thrones. <laughs> do you have a DVR? I yes. hope so. Good. Oh. I love my DVR. Well, thank you, Laura. We'll come back later, but I thought maybe we could talk a little bit to Donna, mm -hmm. she's another town right. wide yeah. candidate this year, yes. running for library trustee. Yes, I'm very excited. Yes. So, Donna, why have you decided to run for trustee this year? Well, I, first of all, I, I have to admit, it's been on my bucket list, okay? Oh, yeah. So I, I love the library. Yeah. I am there uh, a couple times a week. Yeah. Um, before some of the big snowstorms, I had to make sure I got to the library to make sure I had a stack of books. Yeah. Because I was concerned that if it was closed, I, I would run out of things to read. Wow. So, so I, that's I, good. You, yes. you borrow the books, which is a good thing instead yes. of always buying them and wasting well, money like well, that. Well, I was actually talking to Angie. I did a little research uh, recently on, um, you know, libraries and their use. And, and in Massachusetts in 2014, 110 books per minute were checked out, or mm -hmm. uh, items per minute were checked out. Which is huge. Wow! Yeah, um, sure. in, 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 in the state of Massachusetts. In the, st in the entire yeah. state. I yes. See. And but, uh, in, yeah. in uh, Chelmsford, we actually, um, I think they have 140,000 items, and 600,000 were checked out last year. Wow! 600,000, 600, wow. which is a lot. Yeah, a lot. it is. Sure. And that's just that's just the night. items. Not forget about the, the lectures and all the other things that the yeah, library offers. Right. So. so you've always loved the Chelmsford Library. Love the library. Yes, love to read. Mm -hmm which is oh. why she looks so fit, because she's always <laughs> in my <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. Because I like to read, yes. I and I, I think the library is just one of those gems of the town, mm -hmm. and it just it, it needs is. to be preserved. And so you like, you supported yes. when it was redeveloped, right? Remodeled? Yes, 10, actually 12 I did. years ago, yes, 15. absolutely. You were yes. a big supporter. Yep. And it looks great, doesn't it? Does it does look and great. We needed the space. Yep. And it's always crowded. Every time yeah. you go in there, well, you know, it's, it's busy. Yeah. And, you know, I come into the parking lot, and sometimes I think, oh, this is frustrating. I can't find parking. Isn't it great? Because it just means that it's so well used right. and, yeah. and, you know, that there's so many people in there taking advantage of all of the opportunities that the library, yes. you know, has. Yes. And so. sometimes if we need more space, people park across the street, right, yep. where the plaza yes. is. Thank God yes. there's a big yes. parking area there. Oh, sure. And then they could hopefully be careful as they sure. cross the street. It's the circuit, you know. You got to go to the library, yeah. then to Friendly's for ice cream, yeah. and then, you know, <laughs> then you know CVS yeah. to pick yeah. up a couple things, and you're on your way out. Oh, yeah, so okay. ready for and the Donna, storm. I, <laughs> right? yeah. I don't think I asked you yet about your children. You have a couple of young children yep. too, don't you? Both in high school. Uh, one of them's turning 16 in a couple of weeks. Oh, is so. she going to get his license? Uh, she, uh, eventually, she? yes. Um, she will, yes, she will. She's a sophomore at Chelmsford High. Sophomore at Chelmsford yep. High, wonderful. Um, and I have a son who's a senior at Chelmsford High this year. A senior, yep. wow. Yep. What are their names? Uh, Jack is my senior yeah. and Emma is the sophomore. Is Jack in Boy Scouts too or no? No, no not he anymore. Not no, he's anymore, a but big, he used he's to a big runner, as you and I have talked about oh, in the past. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, because you used to run cross country. Yes, cross country. Yeah, so. yeah. before I got lazy. And <laughs> now I bike a, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I can't wait for the weather to warm up I so I can get a bike. You know, I last know. year I biked some in once in January, at least two times in February. Right. And this year I'm not going to oh, get no, out no, at no, all. No, Probably no. not till mid March. Right. I, well, I hope. So you have two children in the high school. Yeah. Uh, I do. And so with the library, you love the library. I love the library. You go to some of the programs. So you want to contribute, basically, Absolutely. to the library and Absolutely. help improve it. Yeah, and I, as I said, I think, you know, I think Chelmsford has so many phenomenal resources, and the library is just one of them. And I saw this as an opportunity to, to you know, participate and to, to give back to the community in a way, um, uh, to help preserve and, and uh, advocate. Uh, for you know one of the resources that we have right. in town, yes. but you know as Laura mentioned, there's just so many. There's open space, and you know yes. the CCA and the North um, 
uh, Chelmsford Town Hall that's been redone. Yes. I mean, I look around and I'm just absolutely Jeez. amazed at all much this town has to offer. Right. I know, it's a yeah. wonderful town, especially yeah. since it's not a big city. Like with right. 100,000 population, right. we have about 34,000 right. citizens exactly. here. And we have a lot of venues, especially yes. if you like hiking, right. you like uh, the arts. We have the beautiful right. Performing Arts Center now yes. at the high school. Absolutely. We have the Chelmsford Center for the Arts in the right. center. We have the Chelmsford Community Center in the old North Town right. Hall. We have so many things in all the places that Laura mentioned for hiking Absolutely. and great. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. many things! It's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. So this oh, and the bike path. For, oh, for, oh, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Path. But <laughs> everybody so, loves yeah. the bike path. Right. It seems. So, and everybody loves the library too. Yeah. Don't you love the people there? All the workers very and nice everything people. are wonderful. Very helpful. Very helpful. Always yeah. pleasant. Yes, they you always know, are. Um, it's so great. Yep. So I, I really. I feel very fortunate to have the opportunity to, to be able to run for this position. What? And I think it's also unopposed this year, too, it right? Is, that, goodness, which is nice. Yes, yes. So yes. it's you and Andrew Salinish yes. running yes. you for the first time, Andrew for re-election. Uh, correct. <coughs> That's wonderful, yep. Donna. So you are going to be a library trustee, definitely. I, I'm, After I, April 7th. Well, I, fingers crossed, yes. Yeah. I don't want to with the carpet horse here, but yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's good. Have you yeah. attended any library trustee meeting yet? No, I did have the pleasure of meeting with Peggy Dunn recently. Oh, good. And good. Uh, another resource. I mean, there's so you know, we have our natural resources, we have our, you know, buildings, human, and, and then we just have the human resources. Yes, and what, yeah. It was a pleasure to meet with her. Good. And uh, you know, to talk to someone who's so passionate about, um, you know, the library and the services and, and yes. wanting to preserve that and and keep it moving forward because as you know, things are changing. Um, you know, I was just showing Angie, I, I downloaded a, an app to my phone so I could uh, take out an audio book from the library and listen to it on my phone. So, you know, we kind of have to keep up with the times, too. That there's yes. so much that's changing in terms yes. of uh, the media and the electronic books and, yes. and everything. So we want to make sure that we have all of those, you know, things available for people as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I always do, which probably everybody here does, I don't know, but is with the library, I go on my computer and I order books mm -hmm. and CDs and... Um, movies, whatever I want, right. and then they send me an email when they come in, yep. and yeah. then, you know, so a couple of times a week I go in there, return things, take things right. back. Right. It's a fantastic yeah. resource. Right. Right. And know, then you think I never buy a DVD or no, And then we, yeah. we belong to the consortium. So yeah. even if we don't have it here in oh, Chelmsford, the Trumps are, yes. mm -hmm. you know, we have Those the Merrimack Valley Consortium that you can, yes. you can you know, order from other libraries. So. Yeah, oh, I always do when yeah. it, on the uh, computers, everyone probably knows. You could check, either you ask just to the Trumps of the Library or the Consortium. Right. I always go to the Consortium because you have 22 opportunities, right. 22 different libraries, you might oh, say, really. right. and there's a greater expanse to right. ask from. Right. So hopefully yes. everybody knows that, but yes. if you don't, you just yeah. could ask <coughs> me and give me a call or something, right. and I'll tell you about it. And there was one other thing. I was on the um, library website, and there's a, a calculator there where you can uh, calculate the value of the books that you've taken out. So oh. I just did a rough estimate of the books that I took out in a year, and, and if I was to purchase those, it would cost me nearly a thousand dollars. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow. Where is so that? Uh, it's on the website, oh. um, and if you click, I think it's on services, and then you'll see it as oh. one of the smaller items. Services. Oh. Yeah, I think that's yeah. where it is. I was just kind of poking around and oh, came wow. across. Oh, you really it. did some uh, deep in depth. I've yes. never seen that. That's great. Yeah, it was, wow. it was. Yeah, it was very interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe later on in the show, we'll mm -hmm. talk about the Dutton House, okay? Because sure. that's sure. one of the big issues with the library sure. right now. Right. Topic. Yes. Thanks. Well, maybe. If I could well, talk well, don't forget, in her spare time, she's a teacher. Oh, yes, I <laughs> am. That, that's right. I do that's spare time. <laughs> oh, 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 could you tell yeah. us about that? Uh, yes, I'm a teacher at Lowell High. I believe you taught at Lowell at one point, correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually oh, following what do, you, what do you teach? I am a special ed teacher for the emotionally disturbed, behaviorally disordered ninth graders. So. Wow, that must be interesting. So they're that's freshmen one word. in high school. Yeah. <laughs> challenging. Yeah, that's challenging. Yeah, no, I love them. Wow. I love them. So Great is kids. it a class or a one-on-one -on -one kind no, of no, thing? No, 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 it's a class. It's a class, and I teach certain content areas. So I teach um, health and science and two phys ed classes, and then there's other teachers who teach other content areas. Health and science and two yep. phys ed yep. classes. Yep. Wow. Well, so that'll keep you busy and yep. make your life exciting, along yep. with your children and yes. everything else you're yep. doing. Yep. So oh, my God. Like all of us, I guess we're pretty busy. Yeah, that's so. wonderful. I and mean, we have a lot to aspire to. I mean, look at that man's resume. Oh, yes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Don. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, Mary, maybe if we could start with you sure, and then sure. Angie, because yeah. you're both running for town meeting re-election precinct eight. Yes. So, Mary, you said 2002 you began as a town meeting rep? That's right. So, <laughs> do you have any goals or priorities as a town meeting rep this year or do you want to see us accomplish anything as representatives assuming we all get reelected? Well uh, sure I would like to see um, 
decorum come back to town meeting. We started that process with the Marcom committee, which I was a part of last year, as well as with Brian Latina, who's here in the audience tonight. Yeah. That was a great committee. Um, representatives from each precinct took place with that, and we had the then moderator and uh, several Dick times Fred? the town clerk came as well. Was that called Maycom? Is that what Marcom. 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 Yes. So that's what you said, right? I, it yeah. almost sounded like quorum for a second, but yeah. Marcom. You yeah. So about. we yeah. Mike McCall, Sam Chase, Kathy yeah. Duffett, Frank um, Barry, uh, Jerry, Jerry Reed, Judy Metz, Beverly Barrett. Is that wow. Name? I don't know. That's pretty, so it you want to see it continue, right? You're saying yeah. Well, so so the idea of it was um, to get back to you know more efficient town meeting, um, follow our rules and bylaws, yeah. and um, you know have it be you know more polite. I would like to see that too. Nice, it's yeah. gotten a little bit astray lately, I would say, and yeah. it would be nice to have that yes. come back. And just in general, the abuse of the Q and A, the questions and answers period. You know, it's. People should follow the rules, you know. That's right. That would make the exactly. meeting move yeah, along. Speaking of that, a lot of people have mentioned, why don't we combine the question and answer with the debate? Because it always tends to get mixed up, and somebody's always there at the wrong time. And a lot of communities, I understand, just have it together. You go to the microphone. You could either ask a question, or you could advocate for a certain position. Have you, do you have any feelings on that, Angie or Mary? Uh, I would like to see the Q and A because, in theory, the, one of the reasons why Chelmsford has it is that if you come up with a valid question that you don't know the answer to it, and you yes. have the panel of people presenting their warrant that you could ask it of, oh, yeah. that's information that would be helpful to the body yeah. in getting their, de their decision. Ideally, that could help, you know, not that you want to um, curtail debate, but it would give the information to people so the debate could be more productive, yeah. more focused. But they could do that too, even if it was combined, couldn't they? You could, but, but then but then you have folks from the community. I mean, if, if, I'm, right. if I live on my street and I see something on the warrant that I have a question about and I want to ask about it, do I want to jump into the fray or do I want to ask my question? It gives them the opportunity yeah. just to go to the microphone and ask their question and get their answer. Oh, you're talking about if there's somebody from the, not a town meeting. Yeah, yeah anyone can come and ask a yeah. question. Yes. Anyone, you know, oh, yeah. And, and well, that's true, yeah. But you felt if it was combined, it wouldn't seem as easy for them to do that? Yeah. And because then again, I mean, if, if people have questions and the, you know, the questions are succinct, that will help everybody. And then if you want to come up and complain or present a problem or ask for more information or... Yeah. Fine, but don't, you know, I don't know. Yes. I well, like, that's I like good. Yeah. Way. Angie, any thoughts yeah, on I agree any of with this? Mary. I think yeah. it's easier. Yeah. Actually, I like the pre town meeting. Yeah. I like that because you go and you get a full picture of each warrant article. Yes. Now, Paul Cohen does, I think, he does an outstanding job in explaining it. And then, like I always say, I admire Laura. Laura gets up and she'll ask a couple of questions yeah. to clarify, and it helps me because I don't think of all the questions, yeah. far from it. And then when you go to the town meeting, it, it should eliminate repeating, but yeah. I, I've been taking count for the last three or four years. I think the highest number of people at the pre-town meeting is 35. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you got 162. 162. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 there, but I always feel comfortable going to the town meeting because I think I have a better understanding yes. uh, of of the articles. Even yeah. though I watch the selectman meeting mm -hmm. and I'll watch some of the other board meetings, but um, with the question and answer, I think if somebody gets up there and starting to debate, they've already made up their mind, and I'm looking for something yeah. to help me make up my mind, and I don't need to listen to somebody debating it. Yeah. I, I just like it that way. Yeah. And I think the group of people that I sit with are the same yeah. because they will just, oh, I never thought of that. You yeah. Know? Yes. For the questions that are asked. Okay. And I yeah. always appreciate the people that, that, that do get up there and, and, yeah. and ask them. And the Laura questions. has, as you mentioned, well, Laura does. Up a few she times, does a right? nice job. <laughs> are, <laughs> what, you want to advocate for certain things or you find yourself at the mic periodically, right? I do, I do. Um, and mostly it has to do with spending issues. I, yeah. um, whenever I see a non-essential spending issue, I want someone to explain to me why we need to spend this money. Mm, yes. And mm. I will go out of my way to come up with the questions. I always go to the, the pre-town meeting and I start formulating yeah. my questions, doing my research, and so that when I get to town meeting, I'm ready to ask the rest of what I need to so that I can be convinced I'm not going to spend this money until you can convince me we need it. 
-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and then I remember one of the articles that you were advocating and I was supporting you on, which was the signs. Do you remember this was a couple of years ago? Oh, yes. And I don't know who came up with this idea, but they had they wanted signs for North Chelmsford, South Chelmsford, West Chelmsford, East Chelmsford. And for one thing, I, I thought we wanted to be an entire community. Like North Chelmsford always complains, oh, we're part of Chelmsford, we're not just a separate, why are people treating us differently? And it had some cost attached to it, you know. And it was a little bit unsightly, right? Weren't you advocating for well, that? Well, I, I personally don't think a sign makes a better community. I think yeah. that trees and open space are yeah. the most beautiful things mm -hmm. to look at. And every time yeah. I see a sign in the middle of that, I yeah. think that man has just come in, or mankind has come in and s put their mark down. Right. I agree. And I don't I necessarily agree. think that improves the quality of life. I agree. Hopefully, if you be get elected selectman, maybe we could revisit that issue. <laughs> because it didn't win that time, but maybe it was kind of new to people. And I don't know who came up with this idea in the first place, but I agreed with you. And I thought it wasn't a huge amount of money, but why waste money for one thing? And why have these unsightly signs going into North Chumpson and all these other parts of town? And why what they call balkanization, I believe, when you have segmenting of a community is balkanizing mm -hmm. into little different segments. And then you get, oh, I'm part of East Chumpson, I'm part of South. And, but right. we should all be part of one community, I think. Uh, but anyway, that's just a small I, issue. I, but I remember <laughs> you, you got up to the mic and spoke about it, didn't you? Yes, I, I did, yeah, definitely. Yeah, very strongly. Um, so anyway, we could talk a little about the election, I thought, for a couple of yeah, minutes. Yeah, sure. I have, uh, just for the town-wide candidates, I brought in, I printed out the list today. And uh, so for selectmen, we have Laura Merrill, who was here today. Yeah. We have Pat Wojcic, who is running for re-election. And we have George Dixon, who is running for re-election this year. And we have Louis Marino, who is running for the first time to be a selectman. He was scheduled to be on the Tonight Show, if you missed this earlier, but he isn't feeling well today, so Angie's filling in for him. And Sandy Martinez had pulled papers, but she never submitted them. She decided not to run for selectman this year. So we have four candidates running for two seats two incumbents and two non-incumbents. Mm -hmm. So any thoughts about this group a uh, little bit? You don't have to have any, but any thoughts about the selectman candidates? Or, I know Laura has some thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Who's most qualified? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you don't well, have any thoughts my, on it, My only fun. thought is is that, you know, uh, it's a tough job and sometimes a thankless yeah. job. Yeah. And yeah. so anybody that's willing to step up and pull papers, yeah and put their name out there to be on the ballot, I think it's just a phenomenal thing. I think yes. it's a wonderful thing. It is, you yes. Know? You know, I yeah. have heard several people say that as I've been reaching out to the community, mm -hmm. and that's the, the positive feedback that I've mm -hmm. gotten has been very encouraging, just mm -hmm. thanking me for, mm -hmm. right. for taking the effort mm -hmm. and the time to, to make this a, a priority. Yes. Well, and it, r it raises discussion, right? right? So if you have two candidates uncontested, you there don't you have go. to play that hard, right? You don't have to fight that hard. Yes. Right. But, you know, if you're right. trying to distinguish yourself and right. tell the community why you're the, you're the candidate they should vote right. for, that's right. going to take a little more effort. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's so it's, it makes it more interesting, too, especially for shows like this one, <laughs> <laughs> to talk about, you know, when it's competitive and you have the different candidates. In fact, for 15 years, I hosted Selectman Debates on this show. And then... Um, People were saying, we have so many debates, and it's just too much, <laughs> and yeah. you know what I mean? And it was for the candidates. It's it was a, yeah. a yeah. job yeah. for me, in a way, because you, know, you yeah. want to be fair to everybody, and you had to be so careful about everything. So I just let it go, because they seemed to say, we have enough debates, and so that's fine. So I have the candidates on at different times, basically. Pat Wojcic is going to be on our next show, and George Dixon was on a previous show just mm -hmm. recently. Oh, yeah. So, okay. um, so all the candidates have been on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's about it for selectmen for now. We'll talk about the, the dates of the debates in a couple right. of minutes, okay? Yep. But first, why don't we talk, we have a big kind of race in the school committee. And by that I mean we have, I think, a very competitive race for two candidates for one seat. Yep. Uh, current school committee member Nick DeSilvio decided not to run for re-election. Mm -hmm. So we have one, what's called an open seat this year. Mm -hmm. And we have um, two very interesting and I think very qualified candidates running. We have Anita Tanini, who is uh, running for school committee. She's attended a lot of the meetings lately and spoke many times at the school committee meetings. You all are aware of that, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. And we have Sal Lapoli, who owns 
sells pizzas, like 50 of them almost, throughout the New England. He has like five Salvatore's restaurant. He owns about a million square feet of real estate in the Lawrence area and other places. This guy, he's, I don't know how he has the time to do this, but he assures me he does. I asked him that himself directly. And he says, yes, Tom, I do have the time. If you have such an interest in improving and having a great school system, you'll make the time. Right. So, so we have Sal Lapoli, who is scheduled also to be on my next show with Pat Wojcic oh, nice. on March 10th, and Anita Tanini, who was just on our she's last on show, it, right, right, Angie? Yes, she, she was. was sitting here yeah. where Laura is. Yeah. So, any thoughts about these uh, two well, school committee yeah, candidates? I do. I, I think I said it the last show. I, I'm pleased. Number one is that they are uh, Chelmsford High grads. They're coming back. Yeah. They want to give back to what the town gave them. They both got excellent uh, education. Yes. They both went out and they're doing well out there in the world. Yes. So nothing is better to see that they're coming back and now they want to do something and keep the momentum of, of our school system and um, you know do what they can to um, improve it. Uh, yes. And everybody has something to do. So I'm pleased, number one, uh, number two is that we have an election. Yes. You know, yes. so even with the selectmen, before, like sometimes you would only, you didn't have people running, but to see people coming up, stepping up to, to run. So I'm, I'm pleased that, that this is happening. Yes. Uh, and I hope it continues because I've been trying to advocate way back, particularly at the time of the recall, um, to get people to, to run, and especially the young people, because the young people were calling us saying, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if I can live in this town and afford it and all this. I, I know that because a lot of them wanted to move mm -hmm. back to Chelsea, mm -hmm. but they couldn't afford it. But wow. then when they got the point that they can, and so they were calling about it. I said, well, do something about it. Run for election. Yes. Run town yes. meeting rep, I said. Yeah. Start there. Mm -hmm. Start there. So yeah. I hope this will start a momentum, you yes. know, maybe. Donna's kids, Mary's kids, yes. <laughs> your kids. Yeah. You yeah. know, they get they it's see this right. happening that that they will um, you know, want to say, well, you know what, maybe I can do it. And we're starting to see these young adults yes. um, participate in some of yeah. the, the things we that are going on. Yes, we do. Young people as reps, but not a huge number, right? In their twenties, no. right? Mostly when people get thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, even seventies, eighties sometimes. They tend to serve more as they get older. For, for yeah. some, but when you're younger, sometimes you have a young family. It's you're true. just so busy. It's true. They don't. But it's great to see them involved if I'm, they I'm, can. I'm happy but I also, that. I neglected to mention too. I mentioned a lot about sale. But Anita Tanini also is a very successful business person. Yes, she is. She's a financial vice president of a startup company with which is doing great, a high-tech company, I believe, and she's been a vice president of a number of them yes. in the financial area, so she has a great uh, knowledge of financial matters, apparently, so you know, I, and, and an MBA degree as I just, well, so, as else, a cell. So both of them MBA. were my students at the high school. Yeah. So yeah. I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're yeah. both doing yeah. great, I think. Yeah. Any other yeah. thoughts about the school committee race? Sure. I. Um, I have to say I'm pretty partial to Sal. Okay. I've known Sal, you know, more than a couple of years, and yeah. I was at the uh, CHS Alumni um, Hall of Fame dinner the night he right. was inducted. When was that, Mary? Oh, that? God, it's uh, it was oh, wow. a while, a couple of years ago. Years ago. Well, yeah, somewhere Well, he that. definitely should have gotten it because oh. he's so successful. <coughs> he did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Yeah. What a wonderful alumni. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, and he has a great story. Um, yeah. My dear friend Donna said I have to hear Anita's story, which I will. Yes, I'm going to go yes. on, uh, yeah. was it next Sunday? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll attend yeah. that. But um, Oh, her party? Her party, yeah. Yes. yes. Um, it's going to be at Pr Princeton Station mm -hmm. March 1st, the same date as Pat's, which is later on in the afternoon, mm -hmm. Pat Woe just at the Chumps of Country Club. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to make them both, I guess. Yeah. I can't. You know, I have to be to everything, right? The oh, Godfather. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. We should carpool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're going to try to make both, too? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, got, a, I got a letter from Pat in the mail. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. The rips. Yeah. Wonderful. Which so you nice. were saying about Sal, you've known him a long time. Yeah, and, and you know, very visible. I mean, he, and he works with the football team, and he's got the business in town, and, you know, very active. Although I did see Anita's sister at the next top teacher <laughs> at the high oh, school. That was quite a show, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the next top teacher? 
it's like a fundraiser they do, oh. and it's you know like Next Top Model. They do different. It's kind of oh, uh, I see. So she was that. one of a <coughs> com competitor yes. number. Co how many competitors were there? About oh, there was so many, and then and then backup maybe? backup yeah. dancers and singers. It and was great. Yeah, there were other teachers. Great oh, it was really? really yeah. It was a really good. This is yeah. probably more of a school thing because I don't think it was that well publicized in town. No, but it was, was it was going packed. I mean, the it kids love it. Oh yeah, because yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah sure. anybody who I goes know. to the school, I, I think yeah. I would love to go and see my teacher yes. up there, and yeah. it sounds great. So yeah. it was a fundraiser. For yeah, it's it's only once every three years. Yeah. So yeah. so this is um yeah I saw it a couple of years ago when I I've never seen there. it. I was surprised. It's I saw on YouTube. The pictures. Oh, yeah. on the table, is it? <laughs> Yeah. No, oh, nice. Of, uh, it's great to have all this stuff on YouTube, by the way. Which this show will be on YouTube again, is in addition to Trumps of Telemedia mm -hmm. and on regular television, mm -hmm. which we're trying to get into high definition now. All of oh. our Trumpers stations. Nice. Uh, there was a lot of us speaking at the Selectman meeting mm -hmm. last night. Yep. Paul P Pete Padula, the director, made a great presentation. Yes, mm -hmm. he did. And so hopefully in a year or two, we could be on high definition mm -hmm. because as people skim through the channels, they don't skim through channel eight much anymore. If you have a high definition mm -hmm. television, mm -hmm. you're in the 800, 900 numbers with Comcast, you know? Right. So yeah. you have a high definition, right? Yes, Angie, I do. Good, good. Everybody does? Yes, but I know oh, to go okay. go find you eight. You read all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go find eight special. So we yeah, you do, them. you yeah. do. But, well, but we have a great... Uh, it's Trump's or Telemedia, that's oh, for sure, yes, right, yes, Angie? Last night. Yes, we yeah. did. Absolutely. Yeah, that was great last Thanks. night. Yeah. Listen to it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try to become a stand-up comedian now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was up there, right? And I was talking about Pete Doula and Trump's or Telemedia, and I, I got a... I tried to be funny. I got a few laughs, and it's really, I love it. <laughs> yeah, you got to laugh at the end. You go, was I too loud? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so having such a great time up there. But I tried to be quick because they had so much on the agenda. Oh, my God. I and mean, they had so many great speakers preceding me. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, not to get off in that tangent. So anything more in the school committee race? Well, again, I, I think that um, especially right now, you know, with a, a lot of the um, uncertainty and, um, you know, issues facing the school committee, the fact that two people want to throw their hat into the ring yeah, and give right. it a shot. Yeah. And, you know, um, I remember Sheila Pachette asking at one of the uh, FinCom meetings for people with financial experience to step forward to see if they could lend a hand. And it's great that that you know both of these both uh, candidates have yeah yeah absolutely yeah. wonderful yeah I have to agree with that I I, I think that it, it speaks a lot for the town that yes. that these people are coming forward and yeah. and so many people are trying to to get involved and, and make things better yes I, I think that that was the one thing that really impressed me the most when I was not involved with the town. I was raising my small children and then I started to get involved through their activities and every place I went there were people that were getting involved and they were so excited about it and they were so yeah. proud of it and it really was infectious mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and I think that that's, that's what we're seeing here is that you know people just want to help yes. make Chelmsford a best, the best place possible. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I hate to say it, but that's why I do this show for 20 years or whatever. That's why I've been a town meeting rep over 20 years, mm -hmm. library trustee. I mean, because I love this town and I feel if you want to improve it, mm -hmm. you throw your hat in the ring or join the committee. I've also been in Trump's Historical Society, et cetera. You just try to help your community in any way that is suitable for you and that mm -hmm. you could help, you think you could Absolutely. help. And so I hope this show helps because basically what we want is to help introduce candidates, all of us are candidates, mm -hmm. and uh, about issues in town, let people know what's going on in an informal, conversational way. And I think it's something you don't find by reading a newspaper mm -hmm. or the internet. No. You know, you got to have to listen to Donna's own voice and Mary's mm -hmm. and Laura's and Angie's, your own words. But not to get off on another day, Angie, because <laughs> we have so much to cover. <laughs> but. No. But planning board, um, this one might be quicker because we don't have competition. We have three seats this year, and we have three candidates. Colleen Stansfield's mm -hmm. running for re-election. Glenn Cole is running for re-election. He was an alternate, I think, right. previously. But And Monica Gregoire, who I think is a new candidate this year. So we have three candidates for three seats. So any comments about the planning board race? Or if no, not, we'll just good. move on. Once again, there's somebody yeah. new, yep. which is great. Yes. And yeah. for library trustee, as I mentioned previously, we have Donna Newcomb running mm -hmm. uh, yep. for this year, and we have Andrew Salinich running for re-election. Mm -hmm. So two candidates for two seats. Right. 
So you both are going to get elected, right. I'm sure. Glad there's no competition in the yeah. county. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said to you, I said, you, you like it either your first time. You yeah. Oh, it makes it so much easier. Oh, yeah, sure it yeah, does. Yeah, it's better. Sure it does. Can I ask a question? Uh, certainly. So for the alternate seat that's open and no one's running for it, is that going to affect how they can run their meetings, planning board? Why? Th somebody will probably win as a write-in candidate, right? You're talking about for planning yeah. board. There's one open seat that people are probably, there'll be a write-in candidates probably mm -hmm. for the planning board. So that won't affect anything, right? Mary, I, I remember that two years ago that um, if you missed a meeting that was partway through a vote, then they couldn't take the vote. They had to reset the meeting. Yeah. Remember that was going on a bit, and then the alternate had to take over. Well, that happens a lot with the alternates. Yeah. That's kind of their purpose to fill right. in when somebody has missed meetings or there's a conflict of interest or something. So I, the, that person will be elected, I believe, as long as it gets a few votes. So if you're interested in the planning board, and I hope some of you are, uh, you, you could ask you and your friends, you could be out there on election day, and you could um, hand out little strips of paper. They can't be stickers. The town clerks don't like that. Because right. I know as one year I ran as a write-in. Um, but you could ask people to write in your name. And right. um, if you, chances are if you get a few votes, 10 or 25 or whatever, you'll get elected. 10, so it's a 10. planning board. I yeah, but I mean, 10. the more votes. Because sometimes, yeah. sometimes it's competitive, though. You have a few people running yeah, as right in. True. So I was just saying, the more votes, the better. I got a, a number. But anyway, not to talk about me all the time. But Board of Health, it looks like we were going to have a competitive race. But then Dolores Miller did not uh, return her papers. Mm -hmm. So we have Anne Marie Rourke, a mm -hmm. nice lady, running as an incumbent for mm -hmm. re-election. Library trustee, we mentioned Andrew Salinich and Donna Newcomb for the two seats. Secretary Commission, this nice lady, Valerie Peterson, mm -hmm. running for the one seat, so that's nice. And Housing Authority, a nice lady, Denise Macarell, oh, yeah. Macarell running Denise. for re-election. Mm -hmm. So um, to talk, just give you the dates for some of the debates that we have coming up. Let me see if I could find that we have... Um, the first one, the Chumps and Business Association, mm -hmm. usually it, it always had been a Thursday night, most often. This year it's going to be a Wednesday night mm -hmm. on March 4th at the Chumps Center for the Arts again, mm -hmm. which where we had the last year or two. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. mark your calendars for that. Wednesday, uh, March 4th, beginning at about 7 p.m. Then the next one that we have scheduled, we have the moderator right here in the audience, Brian Latina, for the Republican Town Committee uh, debate or forum. That's going to be March 19th. Laura's all excited about that, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love these debates. I watch them and everything. Donna, <laughs> you might, they might ask you to say something, but you, it won't be a debate because it's not competitive. But oh, same. good to know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's March 19th, uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. at the police station. Okay. So that's an important one. And then, of course, the League of Women Voters, which that's Mary right. Tiano is very involved with, is going to be March 25th, I believe, a Wednesday night, yes. mm -hmm. also at the police station. Yes. So those are three that are nice debates that we'll have. And usually there's, there's a fourth, but as this typically happens, we don't have the date for the Democratic Town Committee one yet. Usually that's decided a little bit closer to the time they're going to have it. Right. But, and so... So, Chumps, you could tell over the years you just know certain things are going to sure, happen. Yeah, right. The Democrats are always going to be announced later, right? Sam Poulton usually hosts that one. So, yes, hi, Sam, yes, if you're out does. there. Give us a date if you have a Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so, I will either be watching those on TV or I'll be there live because I, I find debates, not only local debates, but I'm really into national politics too. I love the presidential debates and everything. Thank you. So, um, oh, we were going to talk a little about the Dutton House, if we have just, mm -hmm. Donna, could you update us as to what's happening with the Dutton House, which everybody knows is right at, near the library? Sure. Um, it's going to be torn down okay. uh, probably sometime later on this spring. This spring. And then uh, what will happen is, um, believe it or not, there's an underground brook. Yes. So the wetland um, restrictions keep on changing yeah. because the path of the water keeps on changing. Oh. And so what they'll do is after that comes down, they'll refigure out where that water is and then, um, you know, build, um, you know, in, in relationship to, you know, what it is that they can based on the restrictions. And it's looking like, I think, uh, from based on what Peggy said, is, is that they might use the footprint from the b building that's there now, the Dutton House, yeah. the existing, uh, that existing place. Oh, really? So, yeah, just that footprint. So. 
Are they planning to add a few additional parking places anymore, or is that? I think it's going to depend. depend. I think it's yeah. depend on how once they figure out where that that brook is, you yeah, know, yeah. what where they're, what they can do. So. And a few weeks ago at the selectman meeting, they talked about if anyone was interested in any parts of that, like the mantles mm -hmm. and the yeah. fireplaces, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to contact the town. Right. Is that still going on, do you yes, think, Yes, as, as far as I know, it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if people are interested, I think that would be a They're great good. idea. Yeah, you contact, yeah. like, the town manager, yeah. uh, the Becky Herman, uh, the yep. director of the yep. library, or somebody yep. at the library, they can yep. point you in the right yeah, direction. Absolutely, I'm sure they'd be happy to Because your, let's try to say yeah. what they can. However, I must admit, I've been in the Dutton House, I've yeah, toured, yeah, yeah. and it's not historically, it doesn't, it isn't that beautiful in the interior. Right, right. That is, it's not like a beautiful in antique right, home right, inside it. Right. For, I think because right. it had been, a lot had been taken out previously. Right. Well, I think when the, the library purchased that back in 1993, I think the, the intention was to, to, to raise that. And it's, it's taken, well, 21 years yeah. to have that happen. And, you know, yeah. for one reason or another, it was put off. But, yeah. you know, now the time has come that, you know, it yeah. has to happen. So. Yeah. And uh, oh. as everyone knows, people, we've tried, the town has tried many times to find a new home for that right. Dalton House. Right. As you know, right. it was going to go on North Road, a corner North and Dalton Road. Right. It was going to go maybe in Dr. Sargent's property on Correct. Trumpet Street. Right. Uh, Dick McClure prepared right. a proposal for it. Right. Uh, we were thinking about where the old fire station is and it's right. going to be demolished and right. Chumpster Housing Authority didn't want it. Right. So the town bent over backwards, I think, to try to find a home for that, right. if anybody's wondering. Right, uh, absolutely. Uh, and I right. think that there w there's, there's so many, uh, it was so prohibitive because of the cost yeah. and, and, and just the condition that it's in. Yes. Um, it's that, uh, you know, eventually you just have to say, you know, we've yeah. exhausted our options and, you yes. know, Yes, and that's what happened. Be, I yeah. think you reach a point right. where you tried the right. best you could Right, and, and you know, to kind of piggyback on what Laura was saying is, is if the town had taken it over, um, then they would have been, you know, the, responsible for re rehabbing it, yeah, right. and then yeah. maintaining it, yeah. and then figuring out what to do with it. And yes. so, you know, that would be another cost that the town would yes. assume. So, you know, I think this is ultimately the best option. As sad as it is, I think it's still the best option. Yes, right? yes. So. Well, um, we have a few minutes left. I wonder. Uh, one of the big issues in town has been the budget, recent, the school budget particularly. You know, there were problems with the f maybe the former business manager, things like that. Any thoughts about that? I know Mary was very involved. I don't know if you could say too much, Mary, because your husband's a superintendent. And one of, friend of mine, a wonderful guy, Frank Tiano. I love Frank. I love you too, Mary. So <laughs> I love you too, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I can say what everyone else knows. I mean, it's I have no inside track. My yeah. husband ethical person I yeah. mean and I also work it's not like yes I can't run his life but um, what we heard loud and clear at town meeting was that town meeting supported the problem right paid for 2014 helped fill a gap for 2015 which I think is terrific um, so town meeting said very loud and clear that they wanted to know who liquidated those purchase orders yes and they wanted to know what was going to be done to make sure that it never happens again. Yeah. I've seen some of those things completed and the rest of them well on their way. So I think the, they're headed in the right direction. Yes. Um, I just wanted to mention, um, not exactly to this extent, but this has happened in the past, right? Do you, you, all, you were also in town. Um, remember when the payroll accrual problem happened, $600,000? On the town side. How yeah. many years ago was this? Oh, Mary Bernie, just like Bernie was the town oh, manager. Oh, yeah. so that was a while ago. And, uh, wow. and we, well, and it was an era. I mean, it was yeah. it was an era, and town meeting supported it. We fixed it. Um, and the same thing under Kerry Spidell when we were amortizing using the wrong <laughs> the wrong tables. Uh -huh. That was four hundred fifty thousand. Right. But I think in this situation, uh, what is upsetting about it is that you know. The, allegedly, the former school business manager knew about it and covered it up or misled people. Yeah. And that is what has people insane yeah. over it. And right. I can understand that. And yeah. it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but what I see, especially with the uh, assistance from the consultant, I mean, what a wonderful person he mm. is. Absolutely. Oh, highly great. talented. Yes. They're just, yeah, they're just yeah, learning just every great. single day what it should really look like. I mean, so for a lot of years, it didn't look like that, mm -hmm. but we, yeah. they made it through. So that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's interesting. Yes. 
And it's Cause, yeah, because I read this year the new budget, and Angie, I think you're familiar with it, it's going to be much more detailed, oh, right? Definitely. Angie, oh, every it, little yes. segment's going to be yes. out yes. with yeah. all this detail, which wasn't yes. there previously. Uh, wh what's or, interesting, or I remember when Kathy and Angie were on the board, and they went to FinCom with their white binders, because yeah. I, I went to FinCom that night, because that was new for them, because, the, you know, bottom line autonomy, and there was always the complaint about not enough detail. And they went with those binders, and that was a step up. That's right. So compared from then to now, now this is just another a real big step. Yeah. Real yes. Big step. Yeah. So no we're going to have a much better system once this is implemented, right? Oh, with uh, Mr. Antonelli is helping a lot to help that get that started. Then we're in the process of getting a new business manager, right? Yeah, they I think in the, the middle. Job and they yeah. made yeah. the description, yes. so, yes. right? Yeah. And the uh, qualifications, I think they're going to be very careful to get the right person mm -hmm. who knows what he or she is doing, right? Mm -hmm. So these don't, mistakes well, don't occur again, yeah. if right. possible. Right. Yeah. Right. No, that's yeah. true. You, you right. do. Well, you know. And I think, I think they're going to take very careful uh, steps with that. And possibly they'd have to get an interim, because I keep hearing how there's a shortage of candidates out there with those qualifications. Oh, really? Oh. I, I don't know what, how their search is coming, but I wouldn't really? be surprised. Oh, I don't know. I haven't heard about the applicants yeah. yet. I, so, oh, I haven't either, but oh, okay. I wouldn't be surprised because oh, okay. they are they were very specific oh, in what they, they wanted they in their candidates. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, and if they, they don't did. get most of those qualifications, I doubt the school committee would go for it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and I wouldn't blame Speaking them. Speaking of the school committee, how do you... How do you think they're doing as well? I, you know, I think it's been a tough year for them, right? All the oh, criticism so they've too. received. Yes. I, it's just, you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking Absolutely. about, right? It's on Absolutely. the internet, in the newspaper. Yeah. People write in the right. newspaper saying, I think they should all resign, right? Yeah. These, and even the Little oh, Sun in an editorial, I think, wrote yeah, the that. editorial. Yeah. Yes. Recent, was, a couple of yeah. weeks ago. Right. Yeah. I felt so bad for them. You know, the volunteer people are trying the best they can. It's a very complicated situation. Yes. Yeah, there's just yeah. no, no other way to state it. It's very complicated, yes. and there's a lot of things that have to be sorted out. Right. Yes. Right. Um, you know, I think they're trying to deal with how did they get to that point, what happened after that point, and how do we prevent it from happening again in the future. Right. Yes. And they're trying to do all three pieces at the same time. Yes. And, of course, you're coming up against town meeting in April and having to have that budget ready. That's right. Um, so, you know, I think uh, it's, it's been a tough road. It's been a tough road, yes. and um, you know, people want people held accountable, and rightly so. You know, they want people held accountable so that we can make sure that we don't have this happen again. And every and yeah. this thing's still up in the air. I mean, Absolutely. the governor has not submitted his Correct. budget, which I think is Wednesday, March fourth. Right. And you don't know where and what he's going to cut, even right. though he said he will not cut local aid, right. he will not cut Chapter 70. Right. But so did an, our last governor. He right. said the same thing, and then he zonked us. Really? Right. Oh. Yeah, he did. He was a big disappointment. Really? I'm sorry oh to say God. it. And, yeah. you know. That's too bad. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. He, he just didn't yeah. pay attention to it, and he just let it go. Mm -hmm. And then before long, here we are. Right. We've been asking for a revamp of Chapter 70 formula. Yeah. For okay. years. 20 yes. years, for years, that formula. Yes. Same idea, same yeah. figures. Something's got to change. I just yes. read from the MTA that this is happening, um, that there, there is a, a study, a committee that's looking at it. For I the talked to our labs, the yeah. foundation yeah. budget. Yeah. They have to change some of the things yeah. that are in there. Absolutely. Yes. You know? yes. And, and, and yeah. not just for the money part, right. but I think it's for the sake of the teachers. You're yeah, asking these teachers to do so much with the MCAS, yep. the PAC exam. Um, well, I think, it's also I think for the sake of the community, too, because right. I mean, education is very expensive. Oh, it is. And it's we have a cheap. lot of residents here in town. Well, actually, we have the, a very small percentage, right, of parents what with. Is it, 17, uh, yeah, and, and, and so, the, you know, and it's yeah. a large portion of the town budget. So I think, you know, the oh. fact. That, that, okay. uh, I'm sorry. The fact okay. that uh, you know that the town is uh, you know um, uh, having to, to bear so much of the burden right. for these unfunded unfunded mandates and things like that. It's that's it's right. unfair to everybody. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's unfair that our hours. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe it. You were such a wonderful panel. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much Donna for having Nuka. me. Good luck exactly. with your election, Thank you. library trustee. Thank you. First time on the show, you did a great job. Thank you very much. And Laura Thank Merrill you. did a great job as Thank well. First time Thank on the show. Thank you for having Campaign me Campaign party, what, March 7th? March 7th, this week from Saturday. Trumps at Country Club yes. in the afternoon. 2 to 5 p.m. Thank you, Laura. Good luck with your campaign. Thank I'll see you, you at all the debates.
Thank you very much, My Angie, pleasure. for coming in again. Great. 26th time on the show. Yeah. Another good show. You did great as usual. Thank oh, you. Great. And thank you, my good <laughs> friend, <laughs> Mary Tiana. Thank you, Tom. It, the time vacuum goes on in here. It yeah, all it always <laughs> I can't believe it. And, uh, 13th time on the show. It was a lucky 13. Everything worked out great. And uh, <laughs> thank you for being here. And thank you, this wonderful crew, Tom and Azora and Larry and the director, Pete Padula. I hope to see you at all the debates and uh, hopefully you'll give all of us uh, a vote on election day. Ciao. <laughs>